Alright, so you just got NBA 2K23 free on PS Plus and you're not quite sure how to get started with getting better at the game. The first thing I want you to do is go into play now, go into 2KU, go into freestyle and select your favorite NBA team. So in my case, I'll be using Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors just to get a feel of what you can do in NBA 2K23. Now from here, if you haven't played an NBA 2K23 game before, it can be overwhelming. So the first thing that you might want to do is press start, go to options, go to controls, and as you can see here, for each specific move, there is a tutorial with right stick indicators and a controller diagram to show you how to execute certain moves. Now as an alternative, I also have a set of basic tutorials that goes a little bit more in-depth compared to what 2K shows you in the controls menu. But they have controls for shooting, dribbling, passing, defense, post-offense, off-ball offense, off-ball off defense, advanced offense, advanced defense, on-the-fly coaching, and as you can see here, it's a game with a lot of different types of inputs and it's a very deep game. So as a first step, you might want to check this out just to see how comfortable you can get with the specific controls in the game. Now, if you want to go into a more guided tutorial, I recommend playing the training game and it will take you through the different types of moves that you can do in NBA 2K23. It's a great way to play around with the different moves and it will also give you some tips and some guidance on how to execute certain moves. Alright, for my next tip, I want you to go into controller settings and I want you to turn vibration function and trigger effect function off. Now these make use of the DualSense excellent haptic triggers and the haptic feedback from the vibration, but in my opinion, these actually distract you from the game and may deter you from executing perfectly when it comes to using the sticks. Now, if you're a beginner, you want to keep the shot meter on. The shot meter is the gameplay indicator that allows you to see when you should release the shot in order to hit a perfect shot in NBA 2K23. Now, the next option I want to look at is shot timing, and I like to keep this at shots only. These are for your jump shots, but there's also an option to make it so that your shots and layups will have to be timed, but the animations for layups are a little bit more difficult to time. So if you're a beginner, I recommend keeping that at shots only. You can also tweak the timing, the, the release timing window for your jump shots. It could be early, very early, very late, or late. I like to keep it at early, but this is more of a preference thing. So play around on which type of setting that you like and what feels natural to you. I started the, uh, the game at the default setting which was late but i found that early was a sweet spot for me and this will require some experimentation from your perspective other than that i like to keep everything on the default setting and i recommend you do so when you're starting out but there's also some benefits to tweaking these settings and we'll discuss that at another video all right the biggest thing that might detract you from enjoying nba 2k23 is that shots now are a little bit more skill based a little bit more difficult in that in order to make a shot you will have to have a green release or a perfect release timing shot as you can see there releasing the shot slightly early guarantees a miss hitting the shot at the perfect release window getting excellent timing guarantees a make and if you hit a little bit on the late side you can actually still hit it if you've got guys like steph curry who is just absolutely the best shooter in NBA history. He's got a 99 three-point rating. So you can get away with not hitting a green or perfect shot if the player you're using has attributes that are absolutely out of this world. Now, another reason why I made that shot without it being a green is that game difficulty is kept at pro. And if you take a look at sliders, the shot sliders at the pro difficulty are a little bit higher than let's say in Hall of in Superstar or Hall of Fame. See as you can see there the shot success sliders are tweaked a little bit lower and it will be a little bit more difficult to hit shots if you slightly miss. So an excellent shot again at the Hall of Fame difficulty guarantees a make. But if you release it a little bit early or a little bit late as you can see it will almost always guarantee a miss. 
So you want to make sure that you practice your shots and make sure that you watch the animation for each specific player in order to maximize the shots that you hit in NBA 2K23. So the other variable that will determine your shot success is whether the shot you are taking is an open shot or a contested shot. As much as possible, you want to hit wide open shots or open shots, and you don't want to take contested shots. Taking a contested shot will speed up the optimal shot release window and will be a little bit more difficult to time your jump shot. So let's take Austin Reeves off the dribble and try to create an open shot using Devin Booker. As you can see, we got an open shot and it resulted in the optimal release window that makes it easier for us to green our jump shot. Now take a look what happens when we try to hit a contested shot. We released at a late window because it was a 21% contested shot. You could actually see the shot meter go from fast, from, from a slow wind up to a fast wind up because it turned out to be a well contested shot. So if you're new to NBA 2K23, the easiest type of offense for a beginner is the pick and roll offense which is done by holding L1, releasing L1, and then feeding your the teammate as they go to the basket for an easy dunk. You can also ask your teammate to fade away from the basket by tapping R1 after holding the screen button. This will result in your teammate fading to the 3 point line and you can hit them for an open 3 point shot. Alright, my next tip on offense is to understand that dribbling in NBA 2K23 and holding turbo too much is not necessarily a great idea. As you can see here, every turbo burst depletes one of those three energy bars at the end. Deplete them too much and your next acceleration move will be very slow. As you can see here, Devin Booker does not have the explosion that he had on the previous possession. So you want to maximize your offensive possessions by making sure you don't spam turbo and you don't result in your player losing his ability to accelerate off the bounce. I will not be able to beat Austin Reeves off the dribble just because of how slow that makes me by losing all of my acceleration bars or what NBA 2K calls adrenaline boosts. This means that to beat your defender, you have to be strategic in when you use your adrenaline boosts. You want to make sure that you're able to blow by your defender and as you can see from that possession, I used only one adrenaline boost, I was efficient with my offense and I got to the basket for an easy layup. The other reason why you don't want to over dribble or hold turbo too much is because if you over dribble, your jump shot timing will be a lot slower than when it was when you had full, when you had full energy. And this is important because a slower jump shot will result in a easier contested jump shot and throw your timing off. As a beginner, these are the core tips that I want you to start with before expanding your game. So let's start with Kevin Durant, making sure that we use efficient offense to try and beat Austin Reeves off the bounce. Let's start by asking for a screen from DeAndre Ayton. Let's get him with a quick crossover. Hit him with an easy fadeaway jump shot. And as you can see, we used simple offense off the pick and roll. We used one adrenaline bar and we got an open jump shot that was easy to green. You want to make sure that you set your freelance offense at the beginning of the game. Freelance offenses are done by setting your offensive settings, selecting your freelance, and choosing a good freelance. Now, freelances are your basic team offenses that will determine your spacing in the game and how the players of your team move in motion and generate offense. So if you want to start out in the game by something basic, I recommend selecting something like the Pelicans 2018 offense. So press X to select the Pelicans offense. It's a five out offense. That's good for a lot of spacing and a lot of shooting. You want to then tap right on the, on the D-pad to enter your offensive options, select X for game plan, and tap R1 to run your freelance. Next, you want to tap right again 
Tap R1 to select your freelance and make sure that Pelicans 2018 is active. As you can see right here, your team will generate movement out of these actions. You can see it's a 5-out offense and if you ask for a screen, you have a 5-out spread pick and roll offense that can help you generate easy offense in NBA 2K 2023. Let's try to generate easy offense out of a 5-out freelance from the Pelicans 2018 freelance by asking for a spread pick and roll using DeAndre Ayton. As you can see right there, we were able to generate an 8% contested shot. Now, it's not wide open, but an 8% contested shot using someone like Kevin Durant is actually a good quality shot. You can take a look at how the play is diagrammed and how your players are moving to give different passes to see what other options open up in your freelance. Let's give it back to Kevin Durant. Give it to DeAndre Ayton. If nothing is going from here, you will see that your players are moving around. And that's the value of your freelance. It determines spacing, determines offensive actions, and you can generate easy offense by using your 5-out freelance or the different freelances available to you in NBA 2K23. And as a bonus tip, step back jumpers are some of the best animations in NBA 2K23. So let's ask for a screen, for example, and try to beat Austin Reeves off the dribble. He's crowding us, but we hit him with a step back jumper by holding R2 and holding the right stick down and away from the basket to generate a wide open step back jumper. After that pick and roll, Austin Reeves was still crowding us, but because we used the step back jumper, it helped us generate open space to create an easy jump shot opportunity, and it is not a contested jump shot. So there you have it as someone who spent hundreds if not thousands of hours in NBA 2K23 and thousands more over the past two decades of playing NBA 2K. These are the beginner tips that I hope you, you, you know, you are armed with in order to start your NBA 2K journey. It's one of the deepest games out there. So if you want to learn more, go check out some of my videos in my channel. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.